Hey everybody, it is Jason, and I'm sorry that I haven't made any videos. I know I said I was going to, I do say a lot that I was going to, um, but in the end, things have kind of happened really, really fast all in one go, and, and as you can probably tell, some good stuff has happened, and especially if you see my Facebook, you already know what's happened, and wait, you can see in the title as well. Yeah, so long story short, Holy fucking shit, I am finally on testosterone. Does the whole, like, oh, there's a hair on the table. The whole, like, um, feeling of saying that is, is just, this is just unbelievable. The fact that I finally, finally, after two years of waiting, after finally deciding to go on testosterone, as well as four plus years of umming and ahhing about my gender, realising that I wasn't a woman, but am I non-binary, am I this, am, you know, am I what, um, that as well, plus all my teenage years of, of feeling this sense of, of a lack of identity, um, to feeling much more content as a child, and yet there were some things that weren't quite right, just all that, it's like, all, all that has kind of led up to this, well, I was going to say this moment, but then it wasn't this moment. That moment when the injection went in the side of my leg. It's just incredible just to think that. And obviously, I just feel absolutely elated. So what happened was, um, the wait for the letter, um, that was really, really difficult. Um, basically, the thing about that, it turns out, that, well, with the with the letter itself, okay, I'll, I'll start with sort of the normal process. So if you go to Charing Cross and you do your second appointment, they give you um, sort of, or grant you testosterone or whatever it is you're going on, they then have to send out a letter. That at the moment is taking 10 weeks by default, which is insane. Um, I can kind of see why, but still, it is way too long. So, as I mentioned in my previous um, video, Dr. Crawford said that she could possibly do it in three weeks, which, of course, you know, at that point, actually, it was 12 weeks, so it would have cut it in, in you know, in, down to a third. And I, I waited the three weeks, and I was aware that she was also on annual leave, because um, she was thinking about finishing it before going on annual leave. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, you know, who's in there? And um, I believe, yeah, so this is really weird because all the sort of bad stuff, it's like, it's kind of almost like a distant memory now. So I'm actually struggling to remember what happened. But yeah, then there was this whole fucking ridiculous thing in the, I went to the expo. Came back from that, um, for those who don't know, by the way, I did the UK Games Expo and I did interviews with people and whatever. Feel free to zoom on over to my second channel, Pair of Geeks, which I do my, with my fiancé, and uh, you'll see all of what I got up to on that. But the point is, after I got back from the Expo, there was a letter from Charing Cross on the doorstep, and I'm like, oh my god, is that it? No. No, it wasn't it. Um, not only was it not the letter, but it... it put all these other questions into my head and the problem was I didn't really take the letter in either until a few days later when I probably prob properly sat down and, and kind of thought about it um, in that it was a really bog standard if you've ever had one of these from Charing Cross bog standard letter saying you have an appointment with so and so on this date, at this time, don't be late, and yada yada yada. And it was a letter um, referring me to the endocrinologist, Dr. Seal, in January. And I sort of thought, okay, well, whatever, and I didn't really think about it. Then the next week, so the week after the expo, um, I was getting really, really down, and I'd been feeling down a bit before um, the expo as well. Um, there was this awful sort of cloud, like dark cloud type stuff. Um, I was feeling very depressed, um, even with the um, 
a second appointment, you know, almost straight after the second appointment, I went on a, on a down because it, it was just becoming such a long wait and okay, fine. I had the appointment. It was great. But at the same time, as you saw in the last video, um, it's like, it's like I was sort of getting close to running on empty if you were, if you were petrol. So, you know, every so often a bit of petrol will go in, but then it just goes, you know, and it's very difficult to understand really how that feels unless you go through the whole thing. But basically, I think someone else said it as well. I think um, Alex Bertie said basically after so many months of waiting for um, hormone replacement therapy, you just sort of accept you're never going to get it or it's taking so long that you've just become used to that state of being forever in limbo. And um, I had a, a bit of a meltdown while at work and in the end I had to go home. And that was when I took the letter in and I'm thinking, well, what does it mean? Why do I have this appointment? Are they still giving me testosterone? I've, is there a problem? Has that come up? Because there was a thing that supposedly was addressed before my referral was sent, which was to do with the possibility that I had PCOS, which is common. And the main reason being is that before I stopped testosterone, I had a higher level of free testosterone anyway. I was on about 7.4, I think, or 7.3, compared to the average three, and uh, it, was, it was flagged as a concern. Um, but I had a scan, and I'm more than happy to tell you that horrendous tale at some point, and we, we me and my GP at the time, we sat down, I was like, have you got any other symptoms? No. Apart from high levels of tea, um, hairy, but you know, I kind of wanted the hair. So <clears throat> it, it it should have been sorted out, frankly. And I thought it had been. And I'd spoken to my first uh, psychiatrist, Dr. Sahato, I'm sorry, Dr. Sahota even, sorry, about this. And um, said, well, we don't need to do anything because I'm not experiencing any symptoms. And we just left it at that. So I was really starting to get worried that I wasn't going to be on tea because we had to sort out this thing first which was in fucking January and after ringing up Charing Cross and speaking to the woman at the front desk she couldn't tell me the answer either which was brilliant I mean she was even astonished about the the letter kind of coming out earlier um because she just kept saying oh 10 weeks 10 weeks you know all that stuff and she said oh I'll tell you in the letter and whatever so I got really, really depressed about that. And then, fortunately, uh, the week after, I got a call from Dr. Crawford, who basically put me out of my misery and said, look, it's all okay. It's just gonna be a checkup. You are going on testosterone. And it turns out, and this is where I got a bit frustrated. She had done the letter in about two weeks, and she had put it on the front desk before going on annual leave and said, I need you to sign this off and send it. Had they sent it? No. So when she got back two weeks later, it was sitting on somewhere and she told me this and she said, I'm now having to sign it and I'm doing that now and blah, blah. blah. Um, and then it was another case of waiting for this letter. Now, the reason why I was concerned about the letter um, was again because of my sort of general state. By that point, I felt obviously a lot better, but I wasn't completely okay. Um, and um, it it was a, a few days at least, and I'm thinking, well, what's happened with this letter? Have they got the wrong address? Considering they were supposed to sign this letter off, but they didn't, you know, it makes you think, have they got something else wrong? Um, but no, I rang them up, spoke to somebody else, and turns out that they'd only sent it last Thursday. So, and I'm not talking last Thursday from now, I mean Thursday before. So um, then I got the letter last Wednesday, which was amazing. Um, I was still a bit in disbelief because I thought, oh, okay, well, I have to have an appointment with the GP and I've never seen him before. And um, I've heard um, that he's been a bit funny about trans issues before, not in like a gatekeeping way, but just not really understanding it. So I'm just like, you know, is there gonna be something else? And the fact that he didn't refer me as well, it was somebody else in Ascot, 
So, you know, is there going to be a problem? But I called up the following morning. They said, do you need to see the doctor or can you see the nurse? And I'm like, oh, I don't actually know. Um, I think I have to see the doctor, I think, because the letter's addressed to him. And uh, the woman sort of looked at me and she's like, no, no, it's all fine. You can see the nurse. I'll book you in at 11. I'm like, oh my God, okay. Fine, yeah. Because I was like, look, the first appointment you've got, I'll fucking take it. Um, but no, so a few hours later. That day was really weird as well. There'd been a massive car crash. Um, and I think actually there might have been either a fatality or someone very close to death. Um, so the whole road had to be closed. Um, this made getting into work really, really difficult. So in the end, we decided to just head straight to the doctors um, because we were literally waiting, um, stuck around this roundabout for like 45 minutes. It was insane. So um, we did that. I thought, okay, I'm gonna have to sign my prescription and blah, blah, blah. Nurse comes out brandishing this prescription and she's like, it's been sitting here for ages, I've already signed it. And I'm like, oh, okay. She said, go and get your uh, prescription, although bear in mind they might not have it in, but see if they've got it, if they do, come back and we'll do it. And I'm like, fuck, okay. So we basically make a beeline for Boots. Um, there was a Lloyd's Pharmacy on the doorstep of the doctors, but it's shite, that specific one is shite. So I'm like, they're not going to have it anyway. So let's go to Boots and see, because I'm aware that lots of people um, who are on Sustanon, which is what I'm on, get it from Boots. So I go there and uh, she looks at the thing. Okay, goes round back. I'm thinking they're not going to have it. They're not going to have it. She leans out and she goes, okay, it'll be five to 10 minutes. And I'm like, fuck, they've got it in. Shit. So I'm just waiting there, trying not to like go into a complete like bawling whatever. Um, pay for it, rush, I'm literally running back to the doctors at this point and we sit down and we get it done. And um, yeah, so it was just amazing. And she's given me a couple of things like, um, I've got this amazing box, which I got as a leaving present and that's got my needles in. Because basically she said, sold the prescriptions for needles, I'll just give you a few, you know, when you need them. And then I've got another prescription here to get my um, sharps bucket, um, which I'll need, um, like, you know, just before I get my second shot. Because um, one thing I did want to do was self-administer it. And in fact, the first time I also self-administered it, I mean, she kind of helped with it because that particular vial was really gluey. Uh, so she had to kind of help me push it in, but I did it all myself and it was great. And um, It's been a few days since I've been on tea. So the official date was the 21st of June, which was also summer solstice, which I think was really awesome, really symbolic. You know, the, the light, uh, the, the longest day, you know, the light and all that, less darkness and all that. So that was really, really cool. But you're probably thinking, what changes have there been? Have there been any changes? Have there not been any changes? Well, let me go through physical changes because so far there haven't really been very many. Um, so there have been a couple of subtle physical changes already. Interesting. Mainly to do with my skin. So um, my face has started to get more oily. I'm not breaking out in acne yet, but especially on my nose, it's definitely more oily than it was. Okay. Um, also, and my fiance can back me on this, apparently my scent has changed slightly, only slightly, um, but it's there. So, that, you know, that's a, a thing that's going on. Um, nothing yet in terms of like hair growth or, or down there growth or anything like that, that hasn't started yet. Um, I definitely feel a bit more, a bit more energy but I don't know if that's necessarily from the tea or whether it's from the mental changes. Um, so that I'm not entirely sure, but like I lift a, lift a load of bags earlier. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, the, the, the main real significant things have been the mental changes. Holy shit. Um, to be fair, I was a bit frustrated earlier today because of some stuff. Uh, basically my fiance has resigned from her job um, 
so there's a lot of uncertainty at the moment and it's all kind of happened at once without much warning so there's a bit of that going on but apart from that like I I just feel so much more calm you know I was so worried because people have been saying oh yeah I feel really calm I feel really chill it's really nice I was so worried that wouldn't happen for some reason and that oh would is testosterone the right thing like for me, is it going to do it? Because I don't know. I've never been on it before. Um, you know, and it's just like... So amazing. It's... it's. There have been several things mentally that I've had to deal with for a long period of time. Uh, one of them is anxiety. And a lot of it is based around kind of noise. Almost like you get this sort of extra white noise type thing. It's hard to explain, but a lot of thinking going on all the time in your head and you're going at 300 miles an hour. That's what I quite often used to say to people. Oh, sorry, my mind's going at 300 miles an hour. Nothing. Like, when I breathe in to say something and I'm not saying anything, I just take a second to just think about my mental state because I still can't get over this. There's not this extra baggage and stuff going on which would really tire me out. Another thing is that, what was I going to say, um, I've forgotten, fuck, what I was going to say, um, uh, well, another thing is that generally I feel more confident because of this, um, again, this sort of general calmness and chill, um, which I guess kind of relates because if you're overthinking everything all the time, it's like you're just looking at things objectively or you're experiencing things as they are i i feel so much more grounded in the present and i thought that i was pretty grounded but apparently not um like getting a coffee now is not this complicated ordeal where i'm constantly thinking what are people thinking of me and things like that it's just like la 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 getting coffee okay you know just whatever i can look outside and think oh yeah there's some nice trees and whatever not kind of go off on some kind of deep moment of like thinking about other stuff and it, the thing is it's not it's not a conscious thing it's a very subconscious thing and you just get used to this over time that has gone another massive thing and this stems from me being a musician is that you are your worst critic and for a very long time i'm talking like back to like teenage years i have had my brain telling me every single thing that i do wrong according to it and it's not like um, a solid voice like you're hearing a voice but it's just a feeling of you've done that wrong or you could have done that better or another thing why haven't you been more productive today even on fucking days off like today I would blame myself if I wanted to just rest or do nothing. I would blame myself because I hadn't apparently done enough. I mean, how fucking stupid is that? And I knew it was stupid, but I still felt it. And that's the biggest problem with anxiety, in that you can be rational all you want and tell yourself that that's obviously not true. And you can have people tell you and you're like, yes, I know this. But your brain still thinks it because that that is what it does and you can't help but latch on to those feelings and it gets worse and worse for the past however many hours how many hours have i had to you like three days now no, i'm saturday today um friday oh no no uh, friday yeah thursday morning friday morning yeah so over 72 hours now it's not there I still, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not oblivious. I still think, oh, okay, maybe I could have done that better. Okay, yeah. But I'm not criticising myself in such um, an unrealistic way, you know, setting the bar so high. So that, to me, is absolutely huge. I, I really hoped that T would, like, improve my mental health, but I really did not think that it would sorry, improve my mental health as much as this in such a short space of time. Like, fuck, it's powerful stuff. And it's such a tiny bottle as well. Like, it's like that big. Um, obviously, I haven't got it with me because we used it. 
But yeah, wow. Um, <clears throat> also, I've going back to the oily, I got some um, cream, like scrub stuff in case I need to start using it. Um, and I'm aware of other things that are going to start happening, obviously, in a bit. But it's just, it's, it's so amazing to finally be on tea. And I'm going to really keep, um, like, I'm going to keep track of it. I've started taking pictures of myself every day. I've taken some sort of body pictures as well to show, um, you know, change over time in like a month or two, whatever. Um, I'll definitely do monthly updates, at least for now, but as it goes on, you know, after, say, a year or so, I might not want to do it every month. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, and you can, yeah, you can probably tell as well that I just appear so, so chilled. I'm still a bit self-conscious that I've got a belly here, but that, I'm also working on that as well. Um, there are a couple of things I'm worried about with tea, but I'm trying to be proactive, so... One of the things was weight gain because I really wanted to lose some fat um, before going on tea. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked out quite as well as I would have planned. I haven't really lost any fat. I've gained muscle, but I've not lost fat. Um, I need to kind of eat more healthily. Um, and um, there are things I'm doing for that. Um, gym is going okay, but again, that's really taken a long, long time to get used to, not feel dysphoric, not feel like everyone's staring at me all the time. Um, and I've gotten used to that and I'm, I'm fine now at the gym. I've gotten, you know, I'm still a bit funny if people talk to me, but again, that will be something that will be, you know, a thing of the past in literally a couple of months. Um, there are a couple of like other things as well but which are not so problematic at this stage um so for example um my voice i want to make sure that, that is all okay going as it goes down but it should be because i'm doing regular singing practice just sort of testing out um my mom is a singing teacher as well so she's going to be sort of checking up and she teaches boys so that's really good um so i'm sure that'll be fine um acne as well is a problem but i've got cream and we'll i'll try not to pick them like i used to when i was a teenager um, and then uh, mood swings, but I don't know, I don't think, apart from today and, and the whole sort of frustrations around um, the uncertainty of, of work, it's a very big deal. Um, but, you know, apart from that, I've been absolutely fine, um, and I'm not really a person who gets angry anyway, so that's all good. Um, and... Things like um, fat redistribution, um, basically my hips are very wide, um, my bum area, all that, very curvy, very much gives me away a lot of the time. Um, I'm, it, basically, I'm, I, I'm assuming my bone structure is quite large in that area. So I'm a bit kind of, is there gonna be anything happening there? Because my top half is actually pretty good. It's quite sort of square um, with a triangle bit at the top. It's already quite... So that will probably be even more so. But in terms of the bottom half of me, I don't really know what's going to happen with that. But I I can't change it. And I've known that for a long time that, you know, it, it works differently for everybody and genetics and all that. The final thing I'm a little bit concerned about, but again, that's sort of a diet thing. And like my doctors aren't worried per se. Um, is apparently my lipids are quite high um, and uh, that was basically the whole reason for the endocrinology appointment in January um, <clears throat> but as well as my diet because I do eat things like bacon probably too much um, there is also the um, sort of factor of the fact I'm on the progesterone pill um, and that I looked it up it does cause an increase in um, basically causing a high level of cholesterol, whereas the other type of pill, which is the combined pill, um, because there's estrogen in that, that actually sort of helps with it. But basically, my body has been without a significant amount of estrogen for a long period of time. So I'm wondering if that has also contributed to that. Good news is that with the pill, um, I can stay on it, hooray, um, because I really didn't want that awful period, dare I use the pun, of possibly coming off it for a bit while I'm on tea and then I start bleeding and all that 
stuff because I haven't had a period for a year, more than a year, and it's been great. Um, but what they've said is after four injections, so one every 28 days, um, then I basically come off um, the pill because I'll, I'll be at the stage where I'm at the same sort of levels as a cis man, hopefully. Um, so it's good. So I'm wondering if because I'll come off it, maybe that will help lower everything in terms of cholesterol, which is good. Because I, I don't really want high cholesterol, if at all possible, because it's not healthy. Excuse me. But then I've also, you know, I can do better in terms of what I eat. Um, and also what I eat in general, a long, for a long period, I keep saying long period of time, but a lot of things are getting sorted out now, finally. Um, it's been a struggle for me for a good long while. This again is going back to sort of late teenage years. Um, I comfort eat, um, not in terms of lots of food, but more what I put in my mouth. So I, I reach for the junk food, um, bacon, pizzas, beer. That's another thing. I'm definitely going to cut down on how much beer I drink because obviously alcohol, liver, you know, testosterone, it's not good anyway. So that's all good. So both, you know, both of us are kind of working on compromises to help change our, both of our diets and sort of just eat better in general. Um, so, you know, we've got stuff in place and we've been proactive about it. Um, and I'm just going to carry on with what I'm doing in the gym. Um, cause gym is fine. Gym is good. I'm doing sort of four ish a week when I can, but I'm aware that at the minute it's not really working and it's more down, I think, to what I have to eat. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And, um, that should be fine. So yeah, I will endeavor to keep up to date with things. Um, hopefully I'll make some more videos as well because yeah, I definitely feel more energy, a bit more productive. I'm not feeling this whole, oh, am I doing enough? And therefore constantly think about that and not actually do things, uh, which kind of defeats the object. But um, sorry, I keep sort of moving around the topic as well, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that's that's me and I'm on tea. It's so amazing. Like, honestly, um, I think I should say a few things to people who are waiting still, because I know that people who watch this, I know that a lot of you are. Um, the wait is so hard. I know. I've said this a lot. And I'm one of the lucky ones in the in a couple of places I have managed to cut corners in terms of how long I wait. The first um, um, appointment from referral was slightly less than they anticipated. It was 11 months. It should have been 13. And now, of course, it's longer. It's like 16 months or something. And then with the letter, it was uh, four, five, no, five weeks. And then all the other bits were already done. So it was literally five weeks and that was it. Like There wasn't like another week to go. Um, so I have been lucky, but please, please, please just keep hanging in there. As somebody said to me in the comments last time, hang in there. It is so worth it. And, and just feeling the, the difference mentally, it, it's unbelievable. I cannot believe that such a thing exists, frankly. Um, it's like... I, I really did suffer at times and especially last last week with the going home thing compared to now I've I've not felt this good for years honestly not overall like obviously I've been happy but not like this not this overall balance that I'm feeling now <clears throat> excuse me so honestly just carry on thinking in that mindset and that you will get there you will get there um and then you never know it might all finish off so quickly that you think oh fuck i'm actually taking it today i thought it'd be next week so you know things like that can happen so really really try and there are plenty of you know support groups on facebook and things like that i'm in one of them um tmsa um does like um it's a uk group but there's like the big afab um, groups uh, that are American based um, there's plenty as well if you're AMAB as well so th there is there is support out there and there's ways you can get advice and things like that but I am worth it so I will bid you all adieu and I will see you in the next video bye bye